Hi, I'm Sabin Yakov. This presentation is entitled Transconductance Amplifier, The Works and Applications. So let me start with some definitions here. What we mean by a transconductance amplifier is an amplifier in which the input is a voltage and the output is a current, so it's a current source and the gain is defined as the transconductance, GM, which is the ratio between the output current and the input voltage. Now the units will be more, one of the ohms, and in a commercial unit usually this GM can be controlled by a signal here, usually a current, so that you can change the magnitude or the value of this coefficient between the output and the input signals. There aren't many units today commercially available. Here are two units which are the, I think the most popular one. One is made by today by Texas Instrument and one by On Semi. Both of these are actually originated at other companies that were bought by these two but they are now produced and can be obtained. There are some other units, but these are the basic units available. The difference between these two is very marginal. The basic circuit is exactly the same. There is some difference in the, there is a buffer at the output, so there is a difference in the buffer between these two. Otherwise, they are basically the same circuit. So here is the connection of the LM13700. It's a Texas Instrument unit sold by Texas manufacturer today and sold by Texas Instrument. And what we see here is that we have here an amplifier. This is the input. There is a control signal here which I'll talk about. And then there is also this control that I mentioned which is controlling the GM. So this is controlling the GM and what they are showing here is like a controlled current source. Okay, it's like a current source that you control it by a current coming here. And as you see, we have here two units and uncommitted buffers that you can then connect to the output. You can load the output, which is a current. You can load it with a resistor, feed it here. There is a voltage here. Then if you put a resistor here to ground, you get a buffered output, buffered voltage output, okay? So you can get a higher current at the output if this is something that you need. Now I'm going now to explain how this thing works, the inner works of this thing, and some application for which this unit could be perhaps useful. So let's start with the inner circuit of the unit, and as I've said, it's about the same for the two units, except for the buffer here, which is a little bit different. Now what we see here is basically a differential amplifier. It's a BJT-based amplifier. There are some diodes here, I'm going to talk about them later on. And then we have here a current mirror, which I'll explain how it operates. And then we have a few other current mirrors. We have one here, which is translating the current over here. And then we have one here, which is translating the current over here. So the output current is a reflection of what is really happening with the current of these two collectors of this uh, differential amplifier. So we are going now to explain all the details of the circuit and I'll start off with explaining the operation of this differential amplifier and then the current mirror and then we'll go on with that. So let me start first of all with a BJT transistor which has a, some input voltage and output current and as we know the relationship between the current and the input voltage is exponential. It looks like this. This is the leakage current. This is the exponential behavior. This is the voltage here at the input. Vt is some constant, kt over q, which is about 26 volt at 25 degrees. So gm, by definition, is the derivative, that is the differential of DIC over DVBE, that is the change in the current as a function of a change of the input voltage. So you take the derivative of this function and then this is the operating point and you end up with this expression which shows that the GM 
transconducted of a BJT, the gain voltage to current, okay, is the function of the say DC current flowing through the transistor and VT. So it is GM that is a transconductance and the value of GN is a function of the current. So if you have a control of this current, then GM is changing. That is, this is like a small signal, and this is like, will be the DC current through the transistor. And then we go to the current mirror. This is a rather sophisticated current mirror, there are simpler ones. And what we see here is two transistors, and then a diode. The diode is actually the same transistor hooked up like this, so it's basically a diode, but inside it's still working as a transistor, okay? So if I go into the relationship between the IN and the mirror output, well, I see here that the input voltage is split between this base current and this current here. And then the current, the output is split between this current and these two base current. Now since the voltage of this transistor is equal to the voltage of this transistor, I mean base to a meter, the current here will be exactly like the current here. So I can write here a couple of equations saying that IN is the IC1 plus IB here and that the I out is IC1, here it is, plus 2IB, and then if I work it out, the difference between these two, two equations, I find that the output is the input minus a term here, which is very small, because this is IB is already much smaller than the current of the transistor, and then it's also multiplied by 1 minus alpha, and this is 0 0.9, 0 0.99 even. So it's a small number, and so a very good reflection here. The mirror output current is really very, very close to the input. Okay, so this is the works of the current mirror. So let's have a look now at the operating point of this circuit, okay? So we have IC coming in, this is a current mirror, so we have IC here. This IC now in the operating point is split between these two currents of the collector, so this is IC over 2 and this is IC over 2. Now this IC here is reflected through this current mirror to here and then to here, so this will be IC over 2. And then the other one is also reflected here and here, so it's also IC over 2. Now in this case, the output here will be 0 because these are the same current and they cancel in each other. There's no residual current between these two. So you might say that the operation of this circuit is really based on what is really going on here and then the collector current is just reflected to the output to make it um, balance it out so that the operating point you'll get zero. So this is really the heart of, of this circuit. Now what happens if you feed in an input voltage between these two? Then obviously there'll be a change in the current as we have seen. And since the, if you have a voltage between two, this is like a positive voltage, this is a negative voltage on this. So it will be like a delta I here and a delta here on the other direction. And then these are then reflected. And since they are in the opposite direction, we have delta I here and delta I here. So we get two delta I to the output. So this is the operation of a differential amplifier. There's nothing new about that. This is the operation of the basic differential amplifier. However, if I add this unit here, this current mirror, and I feed in a current, then I can change the GM of this circuit. I'm talking about open loop here, okay? So I'm changing the GM, so the gain between this delta V here and delta I here is a function of this current, and as we have seen, it has to do with this uh, 
logarithmic function at the base, at the base. And this is the problem here. Because if the signal is large, you'll be swinging over some portion of the V to I characteristic of the transistor. And so therefore, if the amplitude is becoming large, then you're going to have distortion of the current. So this is very bad, of course. So this is very fine if the signal is very small, it's a very small signal. Then, uh, then okay, you're walking at this, this region here, but if the signal is high, then uh, you have a problem. Let me just point out that this is like a regular input stage for an operation amplifier, okay? We don't have the problem with an operation amplifier because in an operation amplifier, the voltage between these two inputs is approaching zero due to the very, very high gain. This is not the case here. This is an open loop situation and we may have a small signal or a larger signal and if the signal is large, we're going to have distortion. This is very bad, of course, for in many applications, audio. And so therefore, there's something to be done here in order to correct. And indeed, there is a correction circuit by these two diodes, which have been put here. And this is for the two units that I've mentioned, they have these diodes. This, these are linearizing diodes. So let's see how these diodes actually help to linearize the circuit, which is very important. And this is rather complex. So let's do it step by step and try to understand how these diodes actually are functioning. First of all, let's have a look at the connection. The connection is such that I am feeding a DC or bias current through these diodes. Okay, there's a current here, there's a current here. For this unit to work with this diode, you have to convert the input voltage to an input current. And you do it by having a series resistor here. So if this is the input, if the input is current, that's okay, but usually it'll be a voltage input. And then you have this resistor, and then you have this current coming in, okay? So you have a current coming in, and there is a current coming out. By the way, here it shows a buffer. We have a loading of a resistor, uh, this buffer here gives you the output like here within the offset of these two uh, base two emitter voltages but the current that you can uh, draw from here is of course much larger uh, due to the current gain of the transistor. Another addition that we have here is this resistor. Now this is a potentiometer and the reason is that you like to use it also to balance out some offsets we're not going to worry about that, but just to say that we have a resistor here, and let's assume that this uh, slider is uh, at midpoint here, okay? This is a simplified circuit. We have the bias of the two diodes. Then we have the input current going here, and then also going here. Well, it's against the, the direction of the diode, but this diode is biased. So current actually can go this way. But not only that, if we look at the voltage between this point and this point, at the operating point, it's zero because the voltage drop on this diode is equal to voltage drop on this diode, but they are in opposite direction. So as you go from here to here, it is a short. So the diode current here is now going this way and this way because these are two symmetrical and here because of the fact that there is a short here this current is also split to half because from here to here is zero voltage so we have the input connected to this resistor and then to this resistor so let's sum it up. We have a diode current going here and here, and it's the diode current that is the feed over two, ID over two for each diode. And then we have the input current, which goes also this way, and it is 
Now the current over 2 again, as I've explained, but notice that while the current of the dial goes the same direction, okay, here it is, through the diodes, the input current is goes in opposite direction in the two diodes. One going this way, and then it goes this way. So this diode will actually have a lower current by I in over 2, and this one has a higher current. Okay, so here it is. Now, summing it up, we have an input current, we have a diode current here. Now the diodes, and this is important, have a current of ID over 2 minus I in over 2, because this current goes this way, and then it has here ID over 2 plus I in. So the current through the diode is imbalanced, and therefore, in fact, they are not exactly the same voltage, okay, because there is of course a change in the voltage here, the voltage here becomes a little bit smaller, and here it's a little bit larger. And then we have of course the IB, which is feeding here. So the IB is fed, this is the bias of control, fed through here, and then it's split over here between these two transistors and each one at the operating point will have a current of IB over 2. So now let's see what will happen if you, we have an input current then as we have said we have an imbalance here and the voltage here is the, the voltage of this diode minus this diode. In case of I in equal to zero, the difference is zero, of course, but otherwise there is some voltage here. And this voltage now is imposed on the input of the differential amplifier. Okay, so this is actually the input to the differential amplifier. Now, the relationship, as we have actually seen, I'm just repeating it, is the following. If you have a voltage here, base to a meter, the current will be, according to this exponential diode equation, and on the other hand, if you know the, the current, then the voltage will be Vt ln I over Is. Okay? So this is the reverse relationship between the uh, operation here, that is between the current and the voltage. Now we are ready to understand what is going on here. We have a voltage between these two points at the input to the differential amplifier. This is VD1 minus VD2. This voltage is imposed on the input of this differential amplifier. Here it is. Now we know the relationship between the voltages and the current. We know the current here. So we know the voltage of this diode and the voltage on this diode. And since there is, and this is this LAN equation, and since it's a subtraction, then in the LAN it becomes division. Now this voltage now is imposed on this differential amplifier. So therefore, we are going to have a change in the collector current. There is a delta here and a delta here in opposite direction as I've explained. Now, since this is Vt1, this one equal to this, so therefore this is equal to this, and you if walk it out, you find that this implies that the output, this is this deviation here, this is output over 2, this is delta i, because output over 2, because the output is twice delta i here, you find that this output volt current is equal to the input times this coefficient, which is the ratio between i, b, this is the control current of the uh, transistors and divided by ID which is the 
diode current, okay? Which is, here it is. This is the diode current, which is split into these two. So, it's like a miracle here. We had the relationship with all these exponential and ln, and all of a sudden, we got a linear relationship here between the input and the output. Well, it's like a coefficient, which is nice. It's a function of i, b, so this is actually a multiplying effect here. So, well, uh, what I've shown is, is of course, the deri derivation which results in this thing, but, but why is it so? Okay, let, let's try to understand it in an intuitive way. And here it is. We have a current going through the diodes and then a disturbance of due to I in. So there is a relationship between I in and this voltage, which is the reverse function of the diode, that is the LAN relationship between VD and I in. Now this voltage now is imposed on the transistor and in this transistor the relationship between the current and the voltage is reversed to this, that is this is the exponential. This is the LAN function and here it is the exponentials. So this nonlinearity is in fact compensated by this nonlinearity on the reverse way, same function, and we end up with an output or a change in an output here, which is the linear function of I n. It's amazing, very clever. So this is the function of these linearizing diode. They actually kill the operation of the differential amplifier with the original generic GM and making it like a linear function between the input and the change in the output. Now what about application? Obviously the application which are really relevant, which this unit will have an advantage over say a regular operation amplifier, is the fact that you can change the gain. Okay? If you need a change in the gain, this will be like for example in audio amplifier, stereo, stereo amplifier, uh, with an automatic or not automatic or manual gain control. So by changing this current, you can change here the output. Now obviously, in this case, uh, you're working here open loop and then distortion is very important and, and in audio, you are very sensitive to distortion and also there is an issue of noise. So I don't know how good is actually this thing today. Today, the requirements of an audio amplifier are really very high, very low noise, very, very low distortion, and I would doubt if you can achieve this with this unit. But this is for a simple unit, uh, simple audio amplifier. Uh, this could be a very simple solution for a gain control. There is another range of application which is using the features of this transconductance amplifier and that is the fact that the relationship is actually a product. That is, it is a multiplier because the output is a function of this current, control current, and the input, the products of these two, so you can look at this thing as a multiplier. So in case you need a multiplier, this could be used. And one application is shown here, this is the multiplier and if you put it into a feedback like this it turns out that the output will be the square root of the input okay so the output is the square root this is correct for a voltage here which is negative okay so if this is negative then this will be the square root of this now where can you use it one application is to realize a through RMS converter. That is a circuit that will produce an RMS value of an input. Now what is an RMS? You need this to square the signal, average this value, and then take 
the square root of this. This is the definition of an RMS. So basically, you can use this configuration, which in fact is this circuit here. This is here a multiplier. It's connected as a multiplier. You see the input goes both to here and to the control. So the output will be the product of this and this. So this is a multiplier. And here it is put in a feedback and this will be the output. I'm not going into the fine details here, which is kind of complicated. And there is a lot of uh, adjustment here. For example, here the bias is adjusted. And so this is really not a uh, modern circuit. Back to the past, okay? And uh, I would doubt whether it is really economical to use it. Not to mention, I don't know how good is the performance here. Especially since we do have now, and I'm showing here, units, it's an IC, which has everything to realize a RMS to DC that is used in multimeters. Okay, this is one chip that is doing everything. You have the rectifier, this is an AC coming in, and then this is the core which is doing the squaring and the square root. And then here you have the output. So having this as one chip, of course, makes this uh, obsolete. Nonetheless, the idea is very clever. You can learn a lot of it. Maybe in some application you can still use it. But I think it is more like the history of electronics rather than modern electronics of today. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in one way or another in the future. Thank you very much.